G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I thought we might take a look at a plane that used to be the top dog, but now is a little bit more superseded by planes that are bigger and better with new and shinier toys. This is the MiG-21 SMT, and the MiG-21 SMT can kind of be bundled up here with the MiG-21 MF. The MiG-21 SMT and MiG-21 MF are highly similar. They both have uh, very comparable radars. They have RWR, they have a similar amount of flares and chaff. They have very similar flight characteristics, and of course, they bear the same armament. Albeit, the only differences are the uh, visual appearances, as you can see by the spine on the MiG-21 SMT, and the lack thereof on the MF, and of course, the uh, slightly heavier weight of the SMT, but the uprated engine to, uh, to compensate. So, both of these planes are highly comparable, and I would consider them, you know, same same. Now. The SMT and the MF have both seen a fair sort of resurgence lately. A lot of the 10.3s have uh, come back to the fray. And I say this as a 10.3, which kind of kind of upsets me a little bit. Because you know me, I'm one of those people that really loves to see a bit of battle rating decompression. I personally prefer matchmakers to be a little bit more spread out and to have a little bit, uh, not necessarily less variety, but uh, fewer cramped matches where a couple of planes are able to spread their wings a little bit more. And the MiG-21 SMT is one of those planes. If you look at this plane in uh, a top-down perspective, so saying 10.3 uh, planes here versus the 9.3s, it has a significant advantage. And those advantages are the strong flight performance. You can see I'm already supersonic and I'm already pulling away from the... Uh, F-104, the MiG-19s, all of those planes, I'm just so much faster than them. Um, I also have a bit of a get out of jail free card at the moment. The flares and the chaff also do some wonders there. But the main kicker are the R-60s. The R-60s are of course your bread and butter in this plane. And whilst you can defeat them with a couple of very easy flares, not many 9.3s carry flares and 9.7s are much the same. So you find that there is a bit of a disadvantage there to the 9.7s and the 9.3s. And uh, for me, that uh, kind of makes me sad because I quite like to see a balanced matchmaker and uh, it, it's, it's not fun. I will say that there are fewer and fewer 9.3s, it seems. It seems like the F-86K, the MiG-19F or the MiG-17F or the, you know, the Shenyang F-5 uh, and a couple of very sparse others seem to be the only 9.3s that are just existing in the matchmaker. Uh, there aren't many that I can even think of off the top of my head. Uh, a couple of 9.7s could probably go down to 9.3 and a couple of 9.3s should probably be at 9.7, but that's beside the point. We're gonna have a look here at this battle and I'm gonna sort of show you how I like to play the MiG-21 uh, SMT. We're gonna send an R60 there towards the F4C. The F4C is going to be a, a fairly high priority target. The F4C here sends an AIM-7 towards me, but of course the AIM-7s are quite slow at this tier. Uh, and I've noticed here that an F5 is uh, looking at my teammate quite, uh, quite, quite lovingly, really, really wants to take that kill. So I'm gonna send an R60 his way and uh, set the F5C on fire. The F5C is actually a fairly uh, level compatriot in certain circumstances to this plane uh, and I consider them to be somewhat competitive with each other. I think the uh, F5 gets a few more flares and the MiG-21 SMT gets a few more missiles. Their flight performance is a little bit different. The F5 has worse flight performance in terms of uh, raw speed and climb rate but by all means the F5C wins every dogfight every day and I would argue that the 20mm revolver cannons on the F5C make it a better choice for dogfighting. Now, this F5C here has gotten himself into a bit of a pickle because I'm able to dump so much speed that he can't quite keep up just at this point and so I'm going to dump a little bit of speed and if he were to continue dogfighting like this he would actually get the upper hand but I just seem to be able to cut in a little bit faster and of course, because of the uh, vengeance I had against him, I shoot a, a plane that's on fire. Not particularly cool, but uh, I think in my, in my frustration, I just thought, you know what, fuck it, I don't care. I'm gonna take him out. So, the uh, flight performance, as you, as you can see with that dogfight, I, I would consider the F5C quite close. Uh, I would also consider the F8s, the F8 Crusaders, to be fairly close in flight performance as well, uh, especially towards those 
sort of higher altitudes. I believe the F8 has a uh, severe, adv or, or severe, or rather, a much higher advantage, much more distinct advantage. Now, moving on to the next match, we're going to see a kind of similar situation. Uh, I'm trying to find matches where i am got a clusterfuck here, and I'm just going to work it down. I'm going to find the enemies that are distracted, and then go for them. And I find that that playstyle works for me quite well, uh, and the MiG-21 SMT facilitates that playstyle just as well. Now, if you guys don't know what skin I'm using here, this is a marketplace skin. This is one of the only skins I would recommend paying for. Actually, I, I lie there. The, the skins here are player-created. So if you want to support these skinners uh, in their work, this actually gives them cash, like not Gaijin coin. It actually gives them hard cash. So um, some of these... Some of these guys like almost make a living off this type of stuff. So if you want to support them, uh, and if you maybe know the creator who's made a skin, or if you think there's a cool skin, uh, buying a buying a skin actually goes to the creator. So uh, I don't feel bad if you you spend money on skins, but of course only spend within your means, and uh, you know it, it's only a skin. It's not really going to be life changing. That being said, we're going to be changing the life of this A-10A here, who's not paying attention. And so, we're going to send a missile his way. It's uh, probably going to hit because he's not paying attention. There we go, very nice and easy. These are some of the easiest kills you'll get. And of course, you've got plenty of flares to, uh, you know, go get those uh, AIM-9Ls to, to go away. So, I'm going to open up here on the F-104 and I see an F-8U in the, in the distance. Uh, I'm going to lock him there with the radar, try and distract him, try and make him think I've got an R3R. The F5C finally goes down, uh, and two F4Cs pop up above me, which would have been not too bad a situation, because they're front-facing and they've only got 9Es, so I figured that it wouldn't be too bad a thing. Now, I'm going to launch at that uh, F4C, and the F104C is uh, coming up to me here, oh, it's an F104A, so I'm just going to pull away very nice and gently and then go into a vertical because I know the F-104 is not going to be able to chase that very well. I'm just going to keep turning and burning and it looks like he's just full committed to this which makes life very, very easy for me. I have to be careful though of that F-4C above me and I'm just going to open up there and miss all my shots which is just so typical. Now, the uh, F-4C looks like he's not paying attention to me, so I can turn my attention once again to the F-104A. Uh, I open up the cockpit for some reason, and uh, the glass is going to go bye-bye. So my pilot's going to get plenty of fresh air, which is excellent for him because he needs to feed that brain with oxygen. Now, we're going to be chasing the F-104, but he is faster than me because he's uh, bled less speed. And the uh, F-104, I'm not sure, it might be be better accelerating. I haven't played many F-104s because I just hate them. I just think they're complete fucking turds. So until the F-104 decides that he wants to play ball with me, then I just don't think I'm going to give in. I'm going to let someone else deal with it, or I'm going to wait for him to just go so slow that it just makes it an easy kill for me. In the meantime, we've got four or three rather F-4Cs to, uh, to deal with. And of course, I can catch them and I can also deal with them fairly easily. I think... At this battle rating here, the uh, 10.7s have a serious advantage over the 10.0s and the 9.7s. I feel like there could be some battle rating stretching or some battle rating decompression that would actually make the uh, 10.0s and the 9.7s a little bit more enjoyable. Now, of course, the 9.7s already are fairly enjoyable, but I would consider them to be a little bit less enjoyable when they're fully up-tiered and facing things that they simply can't do anything against. If I'm in an EE Lightning, I'm pretty much SOL when it comes to fighting these things because they can do everything better than me. And they're only two spots above me in terms of battle rating. 9.7, 10.0, 10.3, we're already at there, that's two spots, and it just makes it really, really a hell to uh, deal with. And so I really would like to see a little bit of decompression, and I have advocated for decompression in this particular spot for quite a while now because I just see this area as having so much potential, but just not having it realized simply because of the lack of available BR spaces to open up some real potential for these planes, because they're just, they're, they're just so narrow in their focus. Just that's the way the aviation industry or the, the perspective on how aviation and air combat would play out would be. It was very focused around intercepting bombers and 
uh, the dawn of missiles and the, and the dusk of guns. And so you have these really one-trick pony type planes that can only sort of feature and perform in these sections where it's, it's super narrow. And I feel like when we get beyond that, you get those planes that can do everything because everyone's starting to learn a bit more about missiles and, and afterburners and, and radar and all of these types of things and everything's getting jammed on every plane. In theory, I understand that the F-4C can carry either 9Gs or 9Js, I can't quite remember, but you think about the absolute arsenal that the planes after them can carry. The MiG-21 SMT is the dawn of that era, and I feel like it's just squashed in too far below. I think there's a lot more room for it to move, and I think that room to move would really benefit the other planes below it that are, you know, still still in the sort of mid-range of that era. Things like the English Electric Lightning are a go-to example. Of course, it's an interceptor, and I really don't want to hear that, but it's an interceptor argument anymore because there are plenty of planes that weren't designed for uh, pure fighting that are still in the game. The F-4C is technically an interceptor. The MiG-21, the early MiG-21s are technically interceptors. The argument doesn't really fly in my eyes, um, but what does fly is an R-60 missile, and the A-5 is hopefully going to cop it in the face, which he does. Scum of the Earth should not, absolutely not exist. Um, that's another plane that I feel like has a few too many bells and whistles. The A-5C, having those Matra Magics all the way down at battle rating 10.0, that's another one dispatched of, and we are hopefully going to get ourselves a big juicy F-104, and uh, yes, flares say yes, so the F-104G is a little bit shit out of luck there. Now, I am in a bit of a pickle, I've used up all my missiles, and we have several very, very fast jets coming in, and this is going to be a bit of a stretch to try and dogfight with the gun, because whilst your bread and butter is your missiles, you have only four of them, which means that you have only four attempts at getting kills, and I've got three. So we need to get kill number four here, which should hopefully be the F4C, and I'm just struggling to get my guns on here, but hopefully that's enough, but no, and the uh, F3H is coming in quite fast. I don't want to be on the receiving end of an AIM-9B because that would be extremely embarrassing. Another A5C comes in, and I'm just in a situation here where I have to turn and burn, and this is the weakness of the MiG-21, especially the SMT, which is a little bit more on the heavier side, and when you combine that with the flares and the chaff, like the ECM pod, you have a real pickle on your hands because there's not a whole lot that you can do. You've only got so much engine thrust and uh, so many head-ons that you can you can beat your opponents in. And now that my team is pretty much dead, the advantage that you get with the SMT, which is your speed and your altitude performance, or sorry, your speed and your climb rate, uh, are kind of gone because you are here at 500 kilometers an hour having to do things like dogfight an F3H. It's the end of the road here, and this here lies the weakness of the SMT. It's a great plane, but it is heavy and it does rely on opponents not being able to see things. So I think we can take a couple of uh, things away from this type of match, and, and the matches before it as well. I think the MiG-21 SMT is very powerful. I think it's also a double-edged sword. There are certain things that you can't just do like you can do in, say, an F5C, and that's the trade-off that you get there. However, this plane is just too low for where it sits. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. That'll do it for today. Check out the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.